You want any bread with that salad? No, thanks. Oh, come on. One little roll won't kill you. Warm, toasty, sweet, salty. You sound like a porn star. What'd you just say to me? <laughs> Kid, what's your name anyway? His name's Butter. My name is Butter. Well, that's what everybody calls me. On New Year's Eve, I'm gonna eat myself to death. Live on the internet. Ignore me now, assholes. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. About what? Your final meal. Hey, did you see that fat ass kid's website? I know the guy is way too big of a pussy to kill himself. They could call me fat ass and butter, but nobody was calling me a liar. You are a total badass. Legendary, bro. I'm Trent, this is Park. Yo, I'm Butter. You know, I put a 20 down that says you won't go for the crickets. You're betting. So you're really gonna do it? You bet? I don't believe it when I see it. I got something better to do on New Year's Eve than watch me. <laughs> oh, that's a burn, Jeremy. Kids at school stopped caring about my website when there was much bigger gossip at hand. Everyone wanted to know how the fat kid cracked the cool crowd. I'm Anna, by the way. Is there a lady? No, no there's no there lady. lady. Adam again was perfect in every way. There's no lady, love. There's no lady. Your card is kind of lame. You want to go to my place? Yeah. Don't tell Dean, all right? There's no lady. So, so good. No, no one else saw that. Are those new clothes? Yeah, Ma. Where'd you get them? At the mall, with friends. So who are these new friends of yours? I think you need like a bucket list. Yeah, bucket list! That's great, good idea. Like, you know, like cool shit you want to do before you, you know, take the bucket. You really think they're your friends? But you think I'm gonna take your place? Even if you do, I guess that spot will be back open in January, huh? And even if you don't go through with it, I'll be done with you after New Year's. Jeremy was right. If I couldn't go through with my plan, this party was over. And I'd be damned if I was ever going back to that long table in the back of the cafeteria. I didn't want to die. I just wanted the unbearable pain to go away. No, but you're not actually going to do it, though, right? I think there's something wrong. I don't understand him at all. Are you here to see if I'm crazy? Not really, but kind of. If you play a song like you just played, people don't see you. Hell, they don't even really hear you. They uh, feel you, you feel me? Boom, all right. Mom gets it. You have an immense talent. How come we're not more alike? We're not that different, son. You know, they tell me not to hug, but I can't help it. I'm a hugger. I think we're good. What's next? Yes! Oh my God! <laughs> oh man, I like that guy. Yeah, me too. I am Paul Kaufman. I am the uh, writer, producer, director, and production company and craft service person <laughs> on the film Butter. I'm, I'm interested in how this project all came about. How did you develop this and, and where did it come from? Uh, it was a book. I found it on Amazon. Uh, I cruise Amazon a lot. I buy a lot of my uh, intellectual property. That's why I find it. I contact the um, uh, the, the novelists and the writers directly. We live in a day and age where you can find yeah. anybody and everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So tell everybody who you are and the film you're associated with and how you're associated with it. Okay, so I'm Erin Jade Lang and I'm associated with the film Butter because I wrote the book that it Butter is adapted from. Nice. Where was the story's origin? How did you start with the story? What, what was your intention when you wrote it? Oh, that's hard. So I was working as a TV news journalist at the time. Uh, so I know, I know, your, <laughs> I know your work. Um, and at the time we were covering a lot of stories about internet bullying and teen suicide and the childhood obesity epidemic in America and all of these things kind of fester in the back of your mind as a journalist mm -hmm. until you need a way to unleash them and they just one day came spilling out in this book and I think it's because my brain needed to get rid of those and, right. and let them out and then of course everybody who writes stories about bullying probably has bullying in their past I do as well so it was important to me in this story that it have 
you know, a hopeful note to it mm. because working in news, so many of the stories of this nature that would cross our desk already had a tragic ending. Nice. So. You know, so on Amazon it said the book is about this uh, teenage kid who's bullied, he weighs 423 pounds, and on New Year's Eve he's going to eat himself to death live on the internet for his classmates. To, to watch, <laughs> and I was like, "This is a, this is noisy. Yeah, this is a noisy subject matter. Yeah, um, and this can be socially relevant and have a social impact. Sure, which is what I wanted my feature to be. Sure. So I read the book, loved it, called Aaron Jade Lang directly, and another producer had another option. Oh. So we kept in touch, and I said, if it ever <laughs> becomes available, and a year and a half later, I uh, should call me. And she said, she said the other producer didn't get anything going with the book, and I optioned it, and I wrote the script. So I have a lot of authors out there who, who are part of my network, who are part of my channel and everything like that. Explain to them, because there are, there's always confusion about how a book gets processed into a movie. Yeah. Explain to them how much involvement the author actually had with what you did and, and how you approached that buying the rights and putting it together and, and making it into a film and, and, and has the author seen the film? Yeah, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, when uh, an author has his or her book optioned for a movie, uh, their involvement is really gonna be up to the person that optioned it. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are books that are optioned and the producers in the studio just go, that's it. Yep. They get a check you in the mail, it yeah, gets made, <laughs> and, and they never communicate yeah, with the yeah. writers. And then, you know, I, you know, Aaron created Butter, yeah. and created this world. So I kept her involved during the whole process. I, I would call her up every now and then. I said, listen, I just wrote the scene. We take a look at it. Does this feel accurate to everything, you know? And yes, she's seen it. Uh, we, she came down to the set, she flew in and came down to the set, nice. she met the actors. She's like, I cannot believe. <laughs> this is happening. These are, who, these are, I, these are, yeah, it, I mean, it must be mind boggling, right? <laughs> yeah, right yeah. To create something, and then yeah. all of a sudden you're talking to the character that you created. I mean, but, and so, um, she's, she's been great, and nice. I definitely kept her involved. And Let's talk about the collaborative effort that you, you and Paul went through, and, and, what, and how he approached you, and how it all came together for you. Well, I was really fortunate because uh, a lot of authors who have their books option never see it again. They yeah. sign away the rights and then it looks completely different on the screen and they had no control over the story. But Paul was amazing at being collaborative with the script. He let me look at it. We had a phone conversation where we talked through some things and talked about voice and some of the changes he made for the screen that made so much sense. Yeah. And a couple of the changes he made, I was like, oh man, that would have worked in the book too. I wish I had done it that way. So I was privileged to be able to do that. A lot of authors don't have that opportunity. Yeah, he said that you were on set, you, that yep. you came in and, and watched it, and <laughs> yes. you were you were amazed that the characters came to life. Oh bit. yeah, it was incredible. When they were shooting on a school that a school campus that day, uh -huh. and we walked through this empty school, and I was like, where are we going? What's happening? <laughs> and then we turned this corner, and it was a lunchroom scene, so it was a busy day on set, and there were hundreds of people, and writing is such a solitary process, yeah. and just doing it all by yourself, and so to see all of these people suddenly helped to bring this story alive that was just you in a room when you started it was magical and gives me goosebumps still just thinking about it. I was looking for a movie to do, you know, I've done a lot of television, a lot of TV series, mm -hmm. I do a lot of TV movies. I was looking for something to make an independent film, but a film that was going to make a statement. Yeah. Um, you know, this film is the first film of my new production company nice. called The Power of Us Entertainment. Yeah, it's and awesome. The Power of Us, you know, it's basically the whole is greater than some of its parts. So, right. so we had so many parts to make this movie from the investors to our crew, Greg Gardner, our DP, who shot Elf, came in because he loved the project. Nice. And like attracts like, and yeah. this project just has attracted a lot of people. You have you have some big names in this film. You have you know you have Mir Savino, yeah. you, and 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 bringing all those folks on board and centering it around uh, an actor who's not as well known. Yeah. And, and putting putting him front and center. How did you manage that? And what what? Were, what did you have a conversation with the bigger name actors about yeah. putting that together and, and yeah, figuring I did. that out? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, uh, the way that that we approached it was 
like the power of us entertainment. You know, this is a story that needs to be told. Yeah. You might not be the star of the movie, but you're going to be a part of this movie that's going to make it do well. You know, yeah. and we needed someone like Mira Sorvino to come on board, and you know, she's just so so terrific with everything that she does yeah. publicly. Yeah. Um, she, the subject matter was near and dear to her, her heart. She loved the character. You know, she worked very hard on it and came up with all the kooky things that she did. Yeah. Um, and so that's why she came on board. Um, people who read the script just wanted her to be a part of it. You know, and the people that didn't want to be a part of it, uh, kind of glad they're not. <laughs> They just weren't, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I show people the script and they say, oh, you're never going to find a guy. You're never going to find a kid who weighs 423 pounds to do, impossible. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, in my whole life people have told me, yeah. that, you know, I've made 26 movies by everyone. And it's impossible. I'm not going to get that one made. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you just sit in your negative corner, but it's possible. Yeah. It is possible, and the proof is in the butter. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the absolutely. Proof is in the butter. Absolutely. And the kid who plays Marshall is just stellar. I mean, he's amazing. He, his, his personality radiates. Yeah. And he, and he just comes off. Is that him in real life? I mean, does he does he have a sense of, of what he was accomplishing with this film? Yeah, he think? does. He does. I mean, I think like everybody... Uh, who is obese can mm-hmm. relate to to that story. Yeah, you know he too went through bullying and mm-hmm. and you know his his personal struggles, um, and so he related to the camera. You know, uh, like most of the people that came in and auditioned. You know, we did yeah. worldwide auditions. Uh, people would send uh, put themselves on videotape. Uh, a couple of the people said that they had read the book Butter and it saved their life. Uh, you know, Alex identified with the character. Um, and uh, you know he came out of Las Vegas. We did two screen tests with him, and uh, and he won our hearts and he won the role. Right. Tell everybody who you are and your your involvement in the film and what film we're talking about. Uh, well, I have a very small role in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Alex Kirsting. I play Butter in the movie Butter. So you know, very very small. Very role. small. No no pressure no, at all. Not not on every me. not in every scene or yeah, anything like I, that. I didn't, not like I had any days off whatsoever. No, it was it was three weeks, three straight weeks. You know, you're here for twelve hours. Get used to it. Paul was very very uh, complimentary about how he found you, and I talked to Paul earlier today. If you didn't, know. oh no kidding. Uh, yeah. Okay. So and so, he and he talked about how he how how he discovered you and how you know everybody was telling him that he would never find the right person right. for this role, okay. and, and oh, you so, came along. So he do, he wasn't trash talking. No, me. Okay. no, not at all. No, no. <laughs> Talk about your journey with this character in this film. Oh, how did okay. you how did how did you first? hear about it and did you read the book and, and absorb okay. it and how did you get into the character? Uh, well getting into the character that was a whole journey just to get into Butter's mindset. Um, luckily there's a lot of similarities between me, myself and Butter. We both deal with weight issues. Mm-hmm. I actually gained weight for the role um, and then I actually didn't even read the book until Paul said you know definitely read the book get an idea of what the character is. So what we did we combined Butter's character from the story, what I could bring to it, and what Paul wanted to bring to it, and we just mesh it all together, and it comes out beautifully. What did the actors bring to this that you didn't have, and the book didn't have, when you started this production that you found really, really made this something special? Um, uh, chemistry. Yeah. It was real, it was just real chemistry. Yeah. Like, if you look at, at Trenton Parker, you know, I remember the first day I shot with him, we were in a... Um, you know, they had really never met each other. And they didn't know each other. And we were shooting the scene in the uh, in the tattoo store. Oh wow! And they just started riffing and just ad libbing and stuff. And I just, I, I, you know, I looked at Jack Griffo and I said, I said, we're gonna have a lot of fun. You know, and um, uh, you know the chemistry. I think the chemistry between everybody really worked. You know, Michael T. Williamson. Yeah. Who you know, as 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 Baba from yeah. Forrest Gump. Um, just the way that he connected with Alex and the role of Butter and, you know, that mentor kind of person. Mm-hmm. But you felt it the second they met and they walked down that hallway together. You could just feel the respect that Butter had for him right. and the care that, um, you know, uh, the professor had. Yeah, had for, absolutely. For, for Butter. How was it working with somebody like Mia Sorvino and, 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 and the amount of actors, the incredible... Michael T. Yeah, Michael T. All them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was no pressure for me at all. 
for your, your third day and say, oh yeah, here's Oscar winner Mira Servino, who is just an absolute badass, by the way. Yeah. And I will defend her tooth and nail. She, she busted her butt the entire time, and it was amazing. Michael T was probably my favorite person on set. He nice. was so super cool. He so was very chill with me. Um, but I, I had no complaints at all with the cast. It was just incredible being around everybody. They had all just a great energy, great attitude towards everything. They weren't... Like uh, I mean, they were everyone was a little sick every once in a while, but nah. no, no one was like, I always want to go home. Everyone's like, yeah, we're here, we're with with butter. We can't 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 wait to keep going. How long did it take to shoot this? What, what kind of uh, grueling schedule were you on? 18 days. Jeez. Yeah, shot it in 18 days in Los Angeles, and everyone just hustled. We had a really good crew. And a crew that cared. Yeah. 18 days, that's pretty grueling. Yeah, 18 days was grueling. It was a couple 18 hour days. Yeah, you bet. I they wanted to be there. They weren't just like making some something that they don't care about or that they get paid for. You know, listen, the crews in LA and the crew that I had, and including myself, we have our money making gigs. Yeah. You know, and then there are things that you just want to be a part of, you know, and you don't make any money off of it, but you're making something that you really care about. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to do both. What do you think your television experience has done for your filmmaking experience? Do you do you think they correlate in one way or another? Completely. Yeah. Completely. Well, you know, making TV for as long as I've been doing it, you know, I know everything about how the camera works, how yeah. the feel works, how the lenses work, and I can use that in order to tell a story. You know, I know how to isolate a character, I know how to do certain things, you know, just based on a technical aspect. But plus working with all the actors that I've worked with and yeah. learning how to communicate with an actor. Um, and what kind of direction, you know, different actors like, some like different directions, yeah. some just want a verb. Yeah, yeah. You know, just give me a verb and I got it. <laughs> you know, um, and then other actors want to go really deep with their characters and go, well, when I was five years old, did I fall out of bed? Did I, you know, just joking <laughs> around, but, but they, they tend to go a little deeper um, with it. And so it's a craft. Yeah. Directing is a craft, you know, it's like anything else. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. I still have, a long way to go yeah. um, and I'll be learning until the day I stop doing it. So you have this experience with indie film now. Mm -hmm. What do you think of it? Well, how, do you, how, how would you characterize your experience with indie film? What did you like about being oh, a part of this? I mean, this is just a once in a lifetime kind of experience <laughs> for me. I mean, authors are, you know, we're introverts by yeah. nature and <laughs> this whole experience doing this right now is Really, I want to say a dream come true, except I didn't really dare to dream that big. You know, I just wanted to tell a story, and so to see it coming to life on the screen is surreal. That's yeah. the only way I can think to describe it. So, what are you going to take from this film that you're going to apply to your next role and your next role and your next role? Um, put in the work. The butter, butter definitely taught me to put in a lot more work. Nice. Normally, I'm very improvisational, and Paul was like, nope, you're not allowed to improvise at all. <laughs> I mean, I managed to get one or two little lines yeah, ad-libbed nice. into it, so hopefully, hopefully it all came out in the final cut. But uh, no, it was just take the role serious, put in the work. Cause I actually learned to play the saxophone. Yeah, for this I was movie. just going to talk I about have, that. I have no music <laughs> talent at all, and luckily they found the sax teacher just ten minutes away from where I live out in Las Vegas. So yeah. it was amazing. I'm like, hey, super convenient. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you still playing? Uh, I want to. I want to, but. It, Costs money to rent the yeah, saxophone, but I'm still buddy. I'm still buddies with the teacher. We still text every once in a while. So, probably once uh, we get more uh, funding, I'm definitely, definitely gonna take it up a little more seriously. Nice, nice. Well, congratulations. This is well, a thank you. This is amazing. You were absolutely stunning in this film. Thank you. It was just a, a really great. One more question for you. Yes. What do you love about independent film? I love independent film just because. You can tell stories that Hollywood just won't let you tell. Nice. This this movie touched on about 15 different topics, from cyberbullying to body dysmorphia, so, uh, what's it called, um, catfishing, and all that's just smack dab into a movie, and it, man, and it flows. It doesn't have that studio cut, switch, and everything. It's not touched by the major studio. It's I touched agree. all with artists. What do you love about being an indie filmmaker? What is it that you cherish about that opportunity? The freedom. Yeah. Yeah, the freedom. Nice. You don't have uh, too many executives telling <laughs> telling you what they, you know, it's just, um, it just, you get to tell your story. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like if you're an artist that and, and you have a canvas in front of you and you're painting something, you just, you just, it, it's just, it's just you and the canvas. canvas. Yeah. When you 
work with too many other people and studios and people that are buying your paintbrushes, buying your paint and buying your canvas, they go, yeah, let's put a splash of yellow there. Let's put, and you're like, no, I don't want to put yellow there. It's like, well, we paid for the canvas. We're going to put yellow there. You're like, oh, okay. You know, so um, just being able to do this um, and tell the story the way, and, you know, uh, whether it's success or failure, I, I told it right or told it wrong, you know, it's my sword. I'm going to fall on it, and, and so be it. And yeah. that's what I wanted. And I, you know, I have enough confidence in myself that, that my passion, um, it just all the work that I've done to get to where I am, it was, it was going to, it was going to turn out. Nice. And I supplied all the butter. <laughs> nice. Yes. And I actually ate butter too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> I mean, I, we, we, we did a thing where we tested butter and uh, we made some prop butter. My props person made out of pudding and we had plastic butter and, we, and it just didn't it work. Right. It didn't have the oily, Mm. gross thing and I said well if I gotta ask an actor to do this <laughs> I gotta do it so I, I, I eat butter 